Well, hello there, my music lovers. I'm Josh from Audiophile Heaven, and today we are having a look at ay 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 Timmy A2 Studio Wireless Headphones. Those are headphones made for studio, but they have a wireless link that can transmit data lossless and with the lowest latency ever seen in a studio headphone. So let's get down to the unboxing. Actually, I'm not going to do a proper unboxing on those because they come in those lots of packs of silica. They come in those black bags where you can find everything. So I am just going to show you the components. This is the carrying bag. Pretty cool solution. Doesn't really offer much of a protection to the headphones. We also have the headphones and we have the wireless transmitter and the cables. So basically this is the wireless transmitter. The wireless transmitter is basically something that receives data, which is basically an analog signal, transforms it to a digital signal and then the duct slash amp inside the headphones must decode it once again so that you can hear the music. The company codes about 80 hours of battery life for the IITME A2 Wireless Plus and uh, they have this cable to connect the transmitter to a source. Basically you plug one 3.5 millimeter jack into the transmitter and you plug another jack into your source mixer, duct, computer sound card, everything you are using. The transmitter is pretty easy to use, it just connects to the headphones naturally, there is nothing you need to do, just press the power button until the LEDs start glowing and then you turn on the headphones and then they are connected. This is pretty much it, the entire process of connecting the transmitter. The transmitter is charged through a Type-C port and uh, the headphones are also charged through a Type-C port which can be found here on the inside parts. The IITME A2 wireless headphones are the only headphones that I know of on the market which can be used as wireless with their own transmitter. They can receive a Bluetooth signal from a smartphone or another Bluetooth transmitter and they can also work wired. Priced at about 350 euros or 390 US dollars, those are slightly more expensive than the other IIA headphones that I reviewed to date and they still bear the same drivers as the other revisions. So if you are purchasing a headphone and you do not need the wireless plus link and if you don't need the Bluetooth functionality, you could order the IIA Timmy A2 in the most basic format or the studio format, which doesn't have all of those and costs quite a bit less. Despite me reviewing every single IIA headphone on the market to date, I still do think that the best sound is when you are using them <laughs> wired. So basically using them connected by wire to a good source will sound better than using them with their wireless transmitter or their Bluetooth module. This is basically because the signal on the inside must be decoded and amplified inside the headband so that you can use the wireless transmitter or the Bluetooth codec. And inside the headband there is simply not enough space to include a larger, more beefy amplifier. So basically you are using your run-of-the-mill duck and headphone amp that is inside the headband. They are not bad by any means and they do provide the wireless functionality with the lowest latency that I've ever seen in my entire reviewing career and I'm at about 400 reviews done to date. Not necessarily video reviews but in total 400 reviews, over 400 actually. And I would say that they do provide everything they promise but there is a big but. Here. Because when you use the wireless transmitter, you basically have to deal with a higher noise floor than when you are using them connected with a wire. They have a pretty normal impedance of about 32 ohms and a pretty low CPL of about 97 decibels. So they will need some volume from most sources, but they will never hiss from most sources. They are quite resistant to hiss. Using them wired provide the lowest overall noise floor. Then there is the Bluetooth connection, which doesn't really have much of a noise floor. There is just a very quiet, but I mean very, very quiet. You probably won't hear it, but yeah, I do hear it, but it is very quiet, high pitched noise when you pause the song. So when you pause the song, there is a two seconds bits of a background hissing noise when you use the Bluetooth connection. On the other hand, when you connect them with the wireless transmitter, you always have some kind of background noise going on. And that is something you will notice. The noise floor is a bit higher with the wireless link. It isn't so bad that you can't work with them. It will be covered by most quiet music, but the overall sound is actually a bit better when using them connected. Also noticed another behavior. You can engage or disengage the wireless mode here. So the other side from the Type-C port. And when you disengage the wireless mode, you actually have a better overall sound. 
because uh, the sound gets a bit louder and a bit better controlled, I think that they are doing a pass through of the signal through its own amplifier if you have the signal engaged and if you don't have it engaged, they are completely avoiding that circuit and that results in a better overall sound. The ay 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 TMA2 wireless headphones are actually quite good, so I really dig their sound, I really enjoy their sound. I don't really enjoy the sound as much in the wireless mode because of the I mentioned problems, but I do enjoy their sound. They are an excellent pair of headphones for both mixing, mastering and music listening. They have a really deep and impactful bass. They have a ton of substance and a ton of information in the lows. They also have a very nice impact. And if you place them on your head, you get about 10 to 15 decibels of passive noise isolation, which is quite good. You will also hear them vibrating and feel them vibrating on your head if you are listening loud and to a song with a lot of bass. You'll hear them, you'll hear, you'll feel that bass in your arms, which is really satisfying and really cool. You will feel that when using the wireless connection too, but they have a different signature when using the wireless and the wired connection, which is interesting because on the wired connection, they have a more clear, more V-shaped sound with a stronger bottom end and a stronger treble, while on the wireless module they have a more linear sound which is more clear and more clean, better for studio work, but at the same time it has lower bass and it has a somewhat brighter tuning with a more open mid-range. They are a headphone with a tone of soundstage in general, the soundstage is quite wide, also quite deep and provides very good instrument separation, but the mid-range is special on the IIT Mi 2 wireless. To confirm this with you, I am now running the S05 Mark II drivers. And those are special drivers made for those headphones. They are the Mark II from SO5. They have many revisions of drivers around. So if you are using those drivers in particular, you'll get the best overall sound possible from the III headphones. And the sound is superb. They have an impressive amount of lows. They have this sweet fluid mid-range that really just flows. It is so sweet, especially female voices especially guitars and guitar solos, they just sound impressive, they just sound emotional, they are delivered with a very natural timbre and very natural tonality, there is no coloration in the midrange, which is really cool actually. The midrange is slightly thickened by the bass sometimes and in some songs, but it is not really that noticeable in most songs, you are going to just have a really good experience with them. They also have a pretty smooth and pretty enjoyable treble, which is never harsh and it is never annoying, it is never too bright. And the treble in general just has this relaxing presentation that can that you can listen to for hours. You never feel fatigued, you never feel tired, and you never feel the need to change the headphones. You never feel the need to like, oh no, I'm tired of the III. No, you are never tired of the III. You always want to listen to them. And this is the cool part. The comfort is actually okay with them because the headbands are a bit small for my ears. And you can judge for yourself whether they are medium-sized or large-sized, but I do consider them to be medium-sized. So if you have large ears, they might be on ear rather than over the ear, but my ear has exactly enough space inside of the ear pads so that they can sit comfortably on my head. So just exactly the right amount of space. The ear pads do creak a bit if you squeeze them, but I'm not sure if this is normal. It happens more on the right ear pads or the one that I have installed on the right, I can actually swap them. But yeah, this was something that I noticed on every single IIA headphone. It is not a matter of concern and you will not hear it while wearing them and listening to music. So they do not creak. There is no problem with the comfort while wearing them. This is something that was a problem with Focal headphones for me and Focal just has a terrible build quality. It's just so poor. And I like the sound of Focal. Focal has nice sound, nice mid-range, very warm and very musical presentation. But the comfort of Focal was so bad that I could never really enjoy the headphones. And this is coming from someone who is willing to put up with a slightly bad comfort to enjoy the, his headphones. So yeah, the IIII Timmy A2 wireless headphones are interesting. They are a pair of headphones that I truly do recommend and I do think that they are worth your time and your consideration. At 390 US dollars, they already are approaching the territory of Haifim and Sundara, compared to which they are actually comparable in terms of overall detail, overall resolution, although they do have more bass and a much smoother treble. They also approach the Avant One Pro Planar, and there the Avant One Pro Planar provides a pretty similar overall signature, but the comfort is slightly better on the Avant One Pro Planar. The Avant One Pro Planar is also slightly harder to drive than the IIT Mi A2 wireless, and I'm always talking about the wired connection. In the wireless mode, they could be compared to something like the Master and Dynamic AMH40 wireless, situation in which the IIT Mate 2 wireless 
has a better overall clarity, a better definition, and actually a lower noise floor. So most Bluetooth headphones do have a higher noise floor than their wired counterparts. There are very few EMZ headphones out there which are wireless Bluetooth or with other wireless technology and which have a low noise floor. Most of them do have some kind of noise floor. I do think that the higher noise floor could be solved in a future headband because you could keep the entire headphone and they could just replace the headband with something that has better noise rejection. It is not so bad that you can't mix or master with them. It is just higher than the wired connection and you are going to notice it. The, the overall detail and clarity is also better on the wired connection with most sources. For example, the Kada Stone 2 Pro DAC slash headphone amplifier for desktop. At the end of the day, you may be wondering whether the IIT Me 2 Wireless Plus is the headphone for you. Question to which the answer is all within your hands, because you know whether you need this wireless future to them. The III as a company makes many headphones, all with those excellent drivers and they will always sound pretty nice. They will always have a pretty good comfort because the headphone has a nice soft touch padding here. They are well made, you can use them for studio work. So if you don't really need the wireless version, you can always purchase the non-wireless version and the wired version, which is simple and which provides an excellent overall performance. But if you do need the wireless functionality you could go for them as they do have the lowest latency that I've heard from a headphone ever that is wireless like ever there is no wireless headphone that has a lower latency even aptx low latency has a higher latency than those they have a latency of about 16 milliseconds which is about the same amount that it takes your display to process a 60 frames per second image so you're very unlikely to notice the delay using the wireless plus connection. I hope that you noticed no delays in my schedule in, in me posting reviews because I do have a pretty busy schedule. I do hope that this video has been enjoyable to watch. I hope you'll consider tuning in for more videos on Audiophile Heaven by leaving a like and going with subscribe so that you can stay up to date with my content. I do hope that you have the loveliest of weeks in there and I do hope that you, my fans, will stay rocking out there. Hope to see you soon. Bye bye.